Those darn communists. Who do they think they are trying to beat the almighty America? Those capitalist pigs. Pah. Let's see them try to beat fine Soviet machine. Darn, Darn it. it. Should, Should we, we just, just nuke, nuke them? them? So, who got the first satellite in space? Me. What about the first animal? Me again. First man in space? That's me. First woman? You guessed it. And who got to the moon first? That'd be me. So, <clears throat> who won the space race? I did. What the fuck? Let's talk about something fun. Space travel! I was reading about the humans and their race to space caught my eye as particularly interesting. The 1950s were a tumultuous but exciting time for Earth. The post-World War boom brought about a rise in population, a new standard of living, and the rebuilding of Europe as we know it. It also was the beginning of the Cold War. You just said the war was over. Then they immediately got into another one? It's kind of their thing. You wouldn't get it. At the time, there were two world superpowers and they were competing to show which economic system was superior. In this corner, representing capitalism, is the United States of America! And in the other corner, representing communism, the USSR! After World War II, the US and the Soviet Union emerged as world superpowers. The competition between the two nations, especially technologically, was fierce. Part of that was what became known as the space race. Oh, catchy. That started in the year 1957. Nikita Khrushchev was the first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. And he meant business. After the US had announced their desire to get into space, the Soviets immediately sped up their own program, vowing to get there faster. The Americans might have been first with nuclear weapons, but we will be first in space. Wouldn't it be better to be accurate than quick? I don't know. Get satellite into air already. I want to see a look on Eisenhower's face when we beat him. How would you see his face if he's thousands of miles away? Launch Sputnik now. Sputnik was the first satellite launched into space. In the Soviet Union, they celebrated. In the US, though, they're going to spy on us. They're going to fire missiles from up there. They'll blow up the moon. <laughs> no one thought that. <laughs> that may be an exaggeration, but space travel and technology was such an unknown subject at the time, especially to most citizens, that the idea that the Soviets had done something no one else had caused quite the panic. I mean, surely they saw how cool it was as a scientific accomplishment. Some people did think that. Eisenhower's own administration admitted what a glorious display of technology it was. But they wouldn't say that publicly. Huh, why not? Eisenhower didn't want to show defeat or give in to the display of what he called propaganda. Instead, he doubled down on the US's efforts to develop space technology. The whole world was watching as the space race began. Over the next decade, the competition for space travel became fierce. We Americans launched our own, dare I say, better satellite in 1958. Oh, they did that, huh? But we sent probe to the freaking moon in 59. Pretty cool, huh? And I took that personally. So we sent a chimp to the moon. But we got man in space before the Americans could even get monkey. Not a monkey, a chimp. They sent a freaking chimp? Uh-huh. And the Soviets used dogs. Absolute mad lads. Basically, the USA and the Soviet Union were playing a giant match of tennis with everyone else just watching. So they were competing because they hated each other? You don't really want to be outdone by one of your friends, let alone an enemy. Clearly they had the same goal, though. Why wouldn't they help each other out to avoid any disasters? Oh, yes. There were a lot of those, spectacular failures that cost billions of dollars and even some lives. But they ended up cooperating down the line. Let me skip ahead to the good stuff. In 1961, US President John F. Kennedy announced that the US would have a man on the moon by 1970. A new goal. And how'd the Soviets respond? They were working on sending people to the moon, but were much more quiet and secretive about it. So if they failed, it wouldn't be as humiliating, am I right? Maybe. But in general, the Soviet Union wasn't as showy or flashy as the Americans. It wasn't their style. Tides were quickly changing, though. Kennedy, while still preaching the supposed superiority of the US, understood that space cooperation could be a way to ease tensions with the Russians, especially following several close disasters. 
This is uh, costing America so much money. And for what? Glory of who got to the moon first? Well, yeah. <sighs> Look, it'd be cheaper for everyone if we just cooperated. Have we considered that? But sir, they're filthy commies, our enemy. Who the hell cares? I just want to get to the damn moon. Get me on the phone with Moscow, now. Khrushchev initially rejected the idea of international cooperation, but in 1962, after two academics, one Russian and one American, met together to discuss that possibility, the Soviets warmed to the idea. So they teamed up, went to the moon, and lived happily ever after. Wait, really? <laughs> the meeting, which became known as the dryden blagnarov Agreement, did lead to some cooperation in the form of shared weather data, maps of the magnetic field, and communications between satellites. Ugh, boring! Let's get back to the moon! Yes, the moon Kennedy promised before the end of the 1960s. The US fulfilled its promise in July 1969, when the Apollo 11 mission successfully made it to the moon, to the awe of the entire world, including the Soviets. Everyone was extremely excited, and then... nothing. Nothing? Well, the US had won the race, but many Americans weren't all that happy about it later on. Dude, check it out! They got to the moon a third time! Oh, I see they're still wasting the taxpayers' money on this. I mean, the space program only costs, like, what, 5.3 billion? That's a steal in my book. Yeah, I don't blame them. There's nothing to do there. And Wi-Fi reception is horrible. Yep, that's what humans discovered. It was a huge feat in technological terms, but beyond that, didn't amount to much. But after people lost interest, space travel continued and, in fact, improved. In 1972, a new mission emerged, joined together two spacecrafts in space. To make this possible, the US and the Soviet Union agreed to cooperate. Wow, and it only took them two decades to start cooperating. Big brain alert. <laughs> yeah, it definitely fostered a new sense of partnership between the nations, though it wasn't until after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 that international cooperation really picked up. Russia maintained their space program and ended up helping the US in building the International Space Station. But wait, if the space race hadn't happened, would humans even be as far along in space technology? It may be, but we'll never know for sure. In the end, competition and cooperation between the Americans and the Soviets both played a role in advancing space travel. Nations typically hide their cooperation since it's easier to just act like rivals. A good guy versus bad guys narrative gets people more supportive, you know? Wait a second. Whatever happened to those animals they sent to space? Oh, we found most of them drifting in space and ended up adopting them. They're having fun in another galaxy right now. Oh, just a nightmare. Good night, Confucius.